Welcome to another series of our Budget Explainers. In this session, we will focus on the Budget Policy Statement, popularly known as the BPS. My name is Abraham Uching, and I work as a Program Officer at the International Budget Partnership Kenya. The Budget Policy Statement is arguably the most important budget document in the annual budget cycle, and it is produced by the national government. However, the county, at the county level, the equivalent document to the BPS is a county fiscal strategy paper. The BPS is tabled in Parliament no later than February 15th and should be made available to the public within seven days of its tabling. Parliament then has until February 28th to approve the BPS. The BPS is important because it addresses two critical issues. First, it indicates how big the total budget for the next year should be by estimating the total revenue, total spending, and in cases where the spending is larger than the revenue, the total deficit. Secondly, it provides the share of the budget that should go to each of the sectors, such as health, agriculture, education, among others. The BPS has several elements, but we will focus on five of these elements. They include performance, projections, priorities, ceilings, and division of revenue. Let's look at performance, which relates to budget performance for the previous year and the first six months of the current financial year. Therefore, performance data informs what is realistic going forward and helps us to ask questions such as are our revenue estimates realistic or if we give money more money to a certain sector can they actually spend it based on the performance data we then look at the projections of the total budget that is revenue expenditure and deficit for the coming financial year the third element is on priorities. The narrative section on priorities in the BPS should explain the choices made in the coming financial year amongst the different sectors. For example, why health is prioritized over education or why agriculture is prioritized over uh, security. Therefore, it should be possible to then link these narrative explanations to the numbers in the ceiling section, which we will examine next. The fourth element is on ceilings, which is simply the maximum amount of funds going to each sector, since the BPS determines the final distribution of funds across sectors. Further, the sector ceilings and how they are changing over time are useful to understanding which sectors will be prioritized in the coming financial year. The fifth and final element is on division of revenue. The BPS discusses how funds will be divided between the two levels of government, that is the national level and the county level. Um, it also provides the background to inform the division of revenue bill and the county allocation of revenue bill, which should also be tabled in parliament by February 15th. Uh, this section on division of revenue must justify the overall amount of national and county governments. Further, it indicates the amount that will go through the equitable share and the amount that will be given as conditional grants. The PFM Act requires that the public are involved in this process. In practice, the National Treasury puts out the document for the public to give input. They usually give a very limited window for this feedback. Despite the short time frame, it is important for citizens to engage in the process for reasons mentioned uh, earlier. After it has been submitted in Parliament, the National Assembly and the Senate may seek views of the public on the BPS. This is yet another opportunity to submit either written or oral submissions on the BPS. Finally, thank you for taking time to listen to this budget explainer and I do hope it has shed some light on the budget policy statement and the reason as to why it is produced. Do not forget to visit the National Treasury website 
to get this policy document. Thank you.